Chilly winds are blowing across parts of the bluegrass state, but up next, it's full steam ahead toward a very warm pattern. Train conductor makes a startling discovery. A man's body along the tracks in southern Madison County. That's first at four. And crews return to the Kentucky River today where human remains were found. That update is just ahead. This is WKYT News at Four. Welcome to WKYT News at 4. I'm Amber Philpott reporting. We saw a big change in the weather today. We're seeing gusty winds, some scattered showers, and even a drop in temperature. But it won't stick around for long. Let's check in now with Chief Meteorologist Chris Bailey to see how long it will stick around. You know what? For some of us, Amber, it's just knocking us closer to normal for those temperatures here at the end of October. But around here, normal doesn't last very long, does it? It's either one extreme or the other, and we're going toward the high end of the temperature extreme coming up over the next several days. Right now, you look at this view in Lexington, little passing shower right on top of us with a little misty uh, raindrop, gusty winds, and look at the temperatures. 62 Lexington and Frankfort, 64 Mount Sterling, 54 Covington, 72 into London. That is the difference in our front that is right on top of the region. And the colder air is blowing by mainly to our north, but some of that northwesterly flow west of the Ohio River is going to shoot in here this evening, so it'll knock the numbers down. Nothing about that is out of the ordinary for this time of year. Here's your front off to our southeast, so you've got that seasonal brand of chill across the Ohio Valley and the Great Lakes. Uh, to the northeast of that low pressure, big time snows. Measuring it maybe close to a foot into parts of New York and into New England over the next 24 hours. Around here, just a shower chance this evening. But as we go through the latter part of the evening into the wee hours of the morning, notice how the skies begin to clean up just a little bit. When I come back here in about 15 minutes, Amber, we're going to focus on a forecast that will include a major, and I mean major, warm up as we usher in Halloween weekend. Sounds pretty good, Chris. Thank you. A death investigation is underway in Madison County, where police say a young man was likely hit by a train. The man's body was found in Berea between Chestnut Street and Jefferson Street. WKYT's Phil Pendleton has been tracking the investigation since this morning. It's our top story at four. Police say they were called about 8:30 this morning. A man's body was discovered along the east side of the tracks by a train conductor. The belief is that an earlier train probably hit the man, and the driver of that train simply didn't realize it. The call came in to police simply as a body along the tracks, but a closer look by police and the coroner told them the man was hit by an early morning train. Daylight revealed the man's body later on. He has been identified as 25 year old Brent Douglas Miller of Berea. People say that he's been seen traveling the tracks before. They think he was likely on the tracks early this morning when a CSX train hit him. I mean, I'm really sorry that I hear about this because uh, he could be mine, you know. I have children and grandchildren, and I hate it for anybody. Now, police tell us that crossing the train tracks is actually illegal. You can see behind me here that there is already a path sort of made out through here. People say that people are very commonly seen crossing these tracks, walking on these tracks. Police say it's extremely dangerous and it is illegal. We're going to have more on that coming up in our next newscast. But for now, in Madison County, Phil Pendleton, WKYT. The coroner says Miller died of blunt force trauma. They do not believe anything else attributed to his death. The mystery of human remains found in the Kentucky River is shifting now to Tennessee. That's where a forensic anthropologist will be running tests on the bones, which were found last Saturday. Lexington police, firefighters, and the Fayette County coroner spent the day searching near the Valley View Ferry. They say bones were found in a submerged car in the river over the weekend, and after sweeping the river floor, they found even more bones. Fayette County coroner Gary Ginn says he won't be transporting the remains to Tennessee until he is convinced they have all they could. Could recover. We're working on a number of other stories for you on WKYT starting at 4:30. Sam Dick joins us now for the newsroom with a look at some of the news in progress. Sam, good afternoon, Amber. A Georgetown man has been arrested for allegedly selling fentanyl to a confidential informant. Levi Brandon Fishback was arrested on Monday night on George Martin Avenue. He is charged with first-degree trafficking in a controlled substance. 
We'll have more on the arrest ahead on WKYT News at 4.30. An investigation into a northern Kentucky congregation's finances led to the arrest of the church treasurer. Today, Kentucky State Police arrested Dorothy Colleen Barth on a charge of theft by unlawful taking over $10,000. According to state police, Barth was the treasurer for Trinity United Methodist Church in Augusta. The detective looking into the case says Barth took more than $50,000 from September of last year to June of this year. Barth is in the Mason County Detention Center. We'll have more on the case ahead on WKYT News at 5.30. That's a look at some of the news in progress. Amber, back to you. Sam, thank you. Now to some stories making headlines across the nation at four. New polls out in some key battleground states show that this presidential race is tightening. Voters in Nevada and Florida are making this a closer race than some experts predicted. And now both sides are gearing up for a frantic finish over the final 12 days. Diane Gallagher has this report now on the race for the White House. She's known as the closer. I am grateful for Hillary, for her leadership, for her courage. And for the first time, Michelle Obama is bringing her closing argument to the same stage as Hillary Clinton, the first lady campaigning with Clinton to secure the crucial swing state of North Carolina. This may be one of the most, if not the most, important elections of our lifetimes. Clinton, who is still fighting off the slow drip of the WikiLeaks email hack, is battling to keep states like North Carolina leaning her way. New polls out Thursday show Donald Trump closing the gap in some battleground states, moving Nevada and Florida back to being considered toss up. That's good news for Trump, who started his day with family by his side during an interview on Good Morning America. Well, we're very proud of our father. And is focusing on the must win state of Ohio. Early voting is underway, so make sure get out and vote. We don't want to. We don't want to give this away. But his road to 270 will require much more than the Buckeye State. Even with tightening polls, take a look at CNN's electoral map. In order for Trump to win, he would have to get every red state, every toss up state, those are in yellow, plus one of the light blue leaning Democratic states just to reach that magic number. It is a very narrow path. And though his poll numbers are trending up, time is running out, which is 12 days left to go until November 8th. In Washington, I'm Diane Gallagher. Switching gears now, the World Series matchup between the Chicago Cubs and the Cleveland Indians is now tied at one game apiece. Cubs starting pitcher Jake Arrieta and slugger Kyle Schwarber, who underwent major knee surgery this year, led the team to a 5-1 win over the Indians last night. Game three takes place tomorrow night at Wrigley Field. Who works more, women or men? We'll take a look at what one study has to say in WKYT Money Watch. And today, Apple launched their new MacBook Pro. The details ahead here on WKYT News at 4. Keep up with the latest news on WKYT.com. Join the conversation on Twitter and become a part of the WKYT Facebook family. Welcome back in. Not only do women make less money than men, they're working longer hours. That begins today's Money Watch. That's according to a new study from the World Economic Forum. Women work about an hour longer every day, which comes out to about 39 extra days a year when you factor in unpaid labor like caregiving and house cleaning. The same group says it will be another 170 years before the global wage gap is finally closed between women and men. That new report measures disparities in areas like like economic opportunity and health. This year, the U.S. ranking slipped to 45th worldwide from 28th last year. After a long four year wait, Apple is finally rolling out new Mac computers. Today, the company showed off new MacBook Pros and MacBook Airs, the first major overhaul in years. The new MacBook Pros will have a touch screen in place of function keys and can be unlocked with Touch ID. And if you're anxiously waiting to get your hands on Apple's newest headphones, you'll have to wait a while longer. The AirPods are wireless earbuds for the iPhone. Apple unveiled them in September, but the company says it needs a little more time. Time to get them ready for sale. Meanwhile, Microsoft will pay up to $650 for anyone in the U.S. who, quote, trades up a MacBook Pro or Air for one of Microsoft's new Surface Books or Surface Pros. Microsoft rolled out the new devices just this week. 
There is now a new place to buy a car in Frankfurt. Today, a ribbon cutting was held for the brand new Neil Huffman Auto Mall of Frankfurt. A vehicle was also donated to the Franklin County Career and Technology Center's automotive program. A grand opening celebration will be held for the public on Saturday from noon to 6 with food, giveaways, and store tours. The family friendly event is even holding a trunk or treat for children from 4 to 6. And there's something new and may be unusual to some on the menu now at Arby's. The fast food chain just announced they'll offer venison sandwiches in six states this fall, but Kentucky is not one of them. Tennessee is the closest state with Nashville serving up the new item. Taco Bell specializes in fast food fusion. Their quesarito combines a quesadilla and a burrito, and Burger King now offers Cheetos chicken fries. Plenty of unusual options for you to try if you are a fan of the fast food. Now about this, emojis aren't just for texting. The first set of 176 emojis developed for pagers and cell phones back in 1999 will be on display at New York's Museum of Modern Art. Museum officials say the original emojis planted the seeds for the explosive growth of a new visual language. I'm Deanne Stevens out and about at the Kentucky Horse Park preparing for Halloween. -y. We'll explain when we return here on WKYT. Clouds out there across much of the region right now. Straight ahead, I'll show you why the brief chill down isn't going to stick around for Halloween. The numbers go up, up, and away after the break. Now, your hour by hour forecast with Chief Meteorologist Chris Bailey. Got a weak cold front right on top of the Bluegrass State right now that is ushering in some normal late October air, but it is just a little blip on a warm pattern that is going to take us right on into the first several days of November. Let us find that front out there now. 79 Nashville, 62 Lexington, 47 Detroit. It is snowing into New York State and parts of the New England states. But this front, notice how it does not have a big push that's diving toward the south. A lot of that cooler air is going to the east, and already the back edge of that front is checking back up as a warm front. That's the air that shoots back in here this weekend. It's chilly in northern Kentucky, though, with a gusty wind, 54 into Covington, low 60s, bluegrass region, still 70 into far southern Kentucky. We talked about that temperature swing yesterday. Your Defender Radar Network has had a little shower or two on it for the better part of the day. Mix of sun and clouds just ahead of that front. A lot of overcast coming in behind it that will take us through the evening. Not much in the way of precipitation. How do we roll into the day tomorrow? 40 ish to start. Watch out for some fog. Tomorrow afternoon, a lot of us will be into the mid and the upper 60s on a gusty wind that will crank back up tomorrow evening to keep us into the 50s. Here's your pattern as we roll into the weekend and early next week. High pressure anchoring itself across the Carolinas and the Atlantic. We are on the warm side of that. That's the back edge with that flow that is coming straight out of the south and the southwest. So it's not just going to be Kentucky dealing with this crazy warm pattern. Most of the plain states into the southeast, the Ohio Valley, the Great Lakes, and eventually even into parts of New England dealing with this really warm pattern to end October and begin the month of November. And during this time, the cold is going to stay in Canada. Though let me tell you, signs this pattern is going to do a complete flip as we go into the middle of November and into the second half of November. So the holidays may be a little interesting this year. Focus on the short term. 7 o'clock this evening, 50s. By 11 o'clock, the 40s are here. Unless you're in southeastern Kentucky, you're still just ahead of that front with some upper 50s. Tomorrow morning, I could see a pocket of upper 30s. Many of us will hang into the low 40s. Little Valley fog can be locally thick. Noontime, upper 50s, low 60s. Tomorrow afternoon, though, we start to see the numbers taking off. 70 Southern Kentucky, mid 60s to the north. High school football fans looking good for your Friday evening. Saturday morning, we don't get out of the 50s for a low. Saturday afternoon, 75 to 80. Coming up across central and eastern Kentucky, gusty southwesterly winds. 75 to 80, 75 to 80, 75 to 80, 70. You get the idea all the way through next Wednesday. We'll try to get a cold front in here on Thursday. I think the changes are just after this seven day forecast, but this is about as warm as you're going to find it to end October and begin November. Let's check in. 
No collisions right now on the circle. We just cleared the problem on the outer loop of New Circle at Tate's Creek, so both lanes are now open there. Drive times this afternoon to Nicholasville, still less than 15 minutes. We're holding on at 14. Uh, to Georgetown, about 17 minutes and averaging 22 to Paris. Now back to you in the studio. Officer Don, thank you. There's all kinds of festivities taking place across central Kentucky this Halloween weekend. Some of them creepy, crawly, and spooky, and others just fun for the family. Deanne Stevens is out and about today. She joins us from the Kentucky Horse Park with more. Hi, Deanne. Hey, good afternoon, guys. We are here at the Kentucky Horse Park, where only in Kentucky do you see horses and riders dressed up for Halloween. You too can see what's happening part of Halloweeny uh, here this weekend. Lisa Jackson from the Horse Park is with us, and this is kind of a tradition for you guys, for folks who are not familiar with it. Tell us what Halloweeny is. Well, every year at the pretty much the close of our season, we have Halloweeny, which is on Saturday and Sunday at two o'clock, um, where our horses and our riders dress up for Halloween for our guests. <laughs> I'm wondering what people from other states think about us dressing horses up for Halloween, uh -huh. right? <laughs> That's exactly right. You can't really go, you know, anywhere in Kentucky, you know, without our horse theme. And then, of course, you can't do Halloween in Kentucky without dressing your horses up. I mean, I've heard of dogs. I mean, we have costumes for the dogs, but now for the horses. This has got to be fun for the whole family. Oh, it really is. You know, not only can you come out and spend some beautiful days at the Kentucky Horse Park, but you're able to see our horses and our riders doing what they love and the horses performing for uh, families. But uh, then they get to dress for Halloween. I mean, how much fun is that? This is kind of like maybe a parade of sorts. They come in and they show what they're learning and what they're doing, right? Well, they actually do what we uh, what we do throughout the year for oh. our daily breeds barn show. We actually have some guests that are coming in, and we actually have some of our folks from other departments that come in and dress up for Halloween. They look forward to it all year and kind of have in mind what they're going to do for their costumes. And um, they actually will show individually one at a time for the show, uh, you know, a few minutes and walk, trot, canter, or do what uh, the horse does that makes the horse unique. If it's a regular um, American breed of horse or if it's an internationally known breed of horse like our rare breeds like the Marwari or the Akulteki. And then uh, they bring them out together and let them perform and get some great photos. Sounds like a different way to celebrate Halloween, that's for really sure. Is. All right, I'm going to check out Little Red Riding Hood coming up here in a little bit, see if there's any candy in that basket of hers. If not, we're going to have to fill it up for you guys. The good news is this is a free event with park admission, 2 o'clock on Saturday and Sunday here at the Kentucky Horse Park. I'm Deanne Stevens, out and about. Back to you guys. Scientists believe they've developed a formula ingredient that can help the immune system in babies. That's ahead in Better Living. And smart technology is moving into the kitchen. That's also ahead here on WKYT. Tomorrow night's Mega Millions jackpot is $35 million, and Saturday night's Powerball jackpot is $180 million. It is time now for better living, health, education, and consumer news that impacts your life. A certain prebiotic in baby formula can help babies with their immune systems. Scientists say a new ingredient added to some baby formula helps infants support their immune system more like breastfed babies. The study found breast milk is best for babies, but formulas that add special prebiotics found in human milk provides more immune health benefits. A new UK study recommends screening children in order to save their parents from heart attacks. The test looks for a genetic condition that is the primary inherited cause of early heart disease. If it's found in the child, it means one of its parents carries the gene as well and allows both to receive needed treatment. A first-of-its-kind tool helps doctors predict whether a victim with a gunshot to the head or other penetrating injury will survive. Researchers reviewed 10 years of data from trauma centers and then developed the tool based on the factors they discovered were associated with survival. The device has a 96% accuracy rate. Technology is now taking over the kitchen. There are new devices that measure your food and even do most of the cooking for you. Chris Martinez reports now from San Francisco. The smart appliance trend that started in the living room is now moving into the kitchen. If you look at 
ovens. The technology hasn't changed in 50 plus years. Matt Van Horn is the co creator of the June oven. It uses sensors, scales, and cameras to determine what you're cooking. Place something inside, like this piece of salmon, and the convection oven's computer figures out how to best prepare it be it baking, broiling, or roasting. You can even monitor your food from your smartphone. We're, in essence, teaching the oven to think like a chef. The drop scale uses similar technology. I'm just going to start pouring that in. Sensors help determine when you've entered enough of an ingredient based on weight. The scale's research chef, Jessica Ensel, has been testing it for a year. So when was the last time you used a measuring cup? I haven't used a measuring cup definitely in that entire year. This Samsung refrigerator has cameras inside. At the grocery store, shoppers can use their smartphone to see if they're out of milk. There's also a built-in touch screen where you can look up recipes. Alexa, how many tablespoons in a cup? And if you want to go hands-free. One cup equals 16 tablespoons. Alexa, Siri, and other voice recognition devices have the answers. And it's kind of like Google Maps for cooking. Marcus Gosling helps design kitchen products. There's some really smart, forward think thinking companies saying, well, how could we make seamless experiences in the kitchen? An ideal recipe, he says, that mixes tradition with technology. Perfect salmon. Chris Martinez, CBS News, San Francisco. The way of the world, it seems. By the way, that oven sells for nearly $1,500. The tech company behind it is now taking pre orders and is expecting to start shipping at the end of this year. All right, let's head over to Chris for another check of the weather. And not the best of days out there, kind of dreary. It right? is a little on the cloudy side uh, and gusty winds that are coming in. Those temperatures on cue dropping from northwest to southeast. So we're still. 72 London, yet it is 62 in Lexington or Frankfurt. Overcast skies. We've had a little uh, bit of light rain from time to time. Overall, nothing major in the rain department. Didn't expect a whole lot, but it is only 54 into Covington right now. So you've got an almost 20 degree temperature swing from north to south showing up across the Bluegrass State. That is with a front that is on top of the area. That is not the focus of the forecast, though. This chillier air is not going to stay around long. As a matter of fact, we're getting ready to go. The other way in a hurry. Halloween forecast is up next at WKYT News at 4:30. That starts now.